Hello, my name is Esmeralda Suarez and this is my final project and the topic I chose is Guarchino and I am going to be analyzing two of his artworks. Before I dive into Guarchino's two pieces, I am going to be discussing a little bit about his life. He was born in Cento, Italy in 1591 and he died in Bologna, Italy in 1666 at the age of 75. He was given the name Giovanni Francesco at birth, but was nicknamed Guercino, which roughly translates to squinter. He received this nickname due to the crossing of his eyes. This occurred when he was a young child, as he was roughly awoken from his sleep by an extremely loud noise, which caused one of his eyes to be permanently crossed. This, however, did not affect his painting skills, as he went on to become an apprentice at the age of nine. Even being visually impaired, he was still able to become an amazing artist and create pieces that would heavily influence later eras. Early on in his career, Guercino mostly took interest in painting nude portraits when he was apprenticing and as he studied, he mainly drew and painted nude portraits. This interest of his can be seen having an influence in his art. His later pieces have an almost provocative feel to them and were considered a bit risque for the time. He excelled and was so good at doing these portraits that he was able to open his own academy to teach about them. This academy was called the Academia del Nudo, which translates to the Academy of Nude. Here he had 20 or so students that he was taking under his wing and teaching them about nude portraits. Not only would he give them insight on his technique, but he would have live models throughout the class so that they could improve their skills. The success of the academy was so great that he continued to gain so many students throughout the course. Around this time, he was already becoming so popular not only because of his academy, but because of his work as well. All while managing his academy and teaching his students, he was taking commissions as well. So he was kept very preoccupied during this time. As he began to grow immensely in popularity, one of his biggest supporters became the Pope. In 1621, Alessandro Ludovici became Pope. Alessandro has been, at this time, one of Guercino's patrons, and he supported his artwork early on. With the support of the Pope, his commission skyrocketed, and he gained massive support from those local to the area. Eventually, Guercino had to leave his academy behind due to all of the commissions he was now receiving. His popularity was now not only from those in Europe, but those across the world as well. Everyone wanted artwork from a close friend of the Pope. Around this time is when his style began to take a shift. Where he was once a bit provocative and more explicit, he was now refined and adhered to a classical artistic style. For years and years, he continued with the style until his last art pieces. In 1642, in order to avoid war, Ricino headed to Bologna, Italy, where he stayed until his death in 1666. So these are the two paintings I am going to be focusing on. The first one is called The Triumphant Hercules with the Vanquished Hydra, which was made in 1618. And the second is a painting by the name of Saint Cecile, which was made in 1642. Now moving on, I am going to be discussing the first piece. This is a piece titled The Triumphant Hercules with the Vanquished Hydra. He utilized a pen and brown ink on a paperboard. This is one of Guercino's earlier pieces that was made in 1618, right in his academy days. His earlier pieces looked very similar to this piece with the pen on paper style. This influence of the nude portraits can be seen in this particular piece. Hercules is drawn with just a cloth to cover himself and his chest is very exposed. He is positioned over the hydra, but all of the attention is on his stance and his body, where Chino is able to do this with the very thin lines he uses for the hydra. And using the thin lines, the hydra is there, but with the lighter value that is used, it almost fades into the background behind Hercules. All of the attention is now on Hercules, and where Chino is able to create depth with the shadows that he uses, utilizing darker values across Hercules' body. Overall, this piece of Guercino's is a lot more simple compared to his later pieces, especially the one we'll be seeing next, but he is able to utilize his technique to elevate the piece. Something that I want to add on is that all of his pieces were made during the Baroque era, so all of his pieces have those typical Baroque characteristics, but he is able to make it so that they are all different from one another. 
Now moving on, we are at Boicino's second piece, and this one is titled Saint Cecile, and it was made in 1642. This painting is typical of his later paintings once he changed his artistic style. There are still those elements of the Baroque era, but it is much different than the first piece we looked at. Not only is the medium different with it being oil on paint on a canvas rather than pen on paper, but there isn't the same explicitness that the first piece had. This piece plays more into the religious aspect of the Baroque area. In this piece, we can see there's a woman sitting on an organ, and there is almost a spotlight focused on the woman. Especially since this was painted during the Baroque era, the light on the woman feels almost heaven-like. The light focused on her, along with her face turned, adds strong emotion to the painting. This piece is a lot different than the first one. While we still have a piece with a singular figure as the main focus, the approach is di drastically different. The woman is fully clothed and there is a grim expression on her face, almost as if she does not want to be playing. Despite this piece being different, it is still a great piece and a reflection of Guercino's amazing talents. He was able to change artistic styles but still keep his pieces true to the era and style he was living in. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you so much for listening.